Hey everybody, I am back and um, I have painted the de the base paint um, on the Echardalon Dragon. And so I used bone for the teeth and the claws, the Mechanicus Grey for the stone. Um, I used a mixture of Mephiston Red and White to get the um, like a lighter shade of red here which I painted some of the horns up here um, and on the back of the shoulders and on the top just the very um, tip of the horns on the wings with that color um, and so now I'm at a point where I'm going to be doing the um, oil, an oil wash over the entire model and so I know on the stone I'm going to be doing a black oil wash and I believe on the rest of the model and that's an ivory black and what I'd be using is this Daniel Smith um, and this is just a premium artist oil um, just from the regular art store I don't this this brand I didn't know initially which one to go with and I just tried it out and it works great it's a good quality um, oil paint and I think that's kind of what matters the most um, so I'll use that on the the actual um, rock and on the rest of the model I'm going to be using um, burnt umber as a detail and but I'll show you how I actually mix it I've, I'm not you know an expert on using oil, oil washes but I have had some success and I've only I've recently started doing you know, using this technique and I'll show you um, in another video coming up as well um, that I'll be posting a um, an Eldar Walker a War Walker that I, I use this technique on and I think it came out really good the solvent I use or the vehicle is tur uh, this turpenoid um, odorless turpentine substitute works great I think there are other options you can go with too um, but this is what um, I chose to use and had access to so um, so what I'll do is be back in a second with my stuff out to show you how I mix it and then um, I'll just show you initially how I apply it but not like the, the, the whole the whole entire model okay be right back so when I actually um, apply the and mix my oils. Um, I bought two brushes just from the art store specifically for this. I didn't want to mix my acrylic and oil brushes. I'll be honest, having not really paint, painted with oil and not really knowing which brushes to get, because there are so many different kinds, I, I just asked the person at the store and they made a recommendation. I told them that I'd be using the brushes on like a sculpture um, and what I was doing and they, they recommended these and so um, I, I generally use this larger brush to mix the paint and then um, and perhaps on a larger model I might use this but um, and I might today because I'm working on a large model I use this on the model but typically I use this smaller one for smaller minis and to just get fine details and so um, I think it was Ichiban Painting's channel where he recommended that you first put the oil onto some paper towel and the reason for that is that you'll immediately notice particularly when you first open this that some oil comes out of the paint and gets absorbed under the towel Compa as compared to acrylics drying time is a consideration when working with oils it actually can take quite a bit longer to, for, your, for it to dry off but if you actually do this and get some of the oil onto the paper towel first it actually speeds up the process and so I've been doing it the whole time so I don't really know what the alternative is like I mean I've found that using a really dilute wash like I do within a few hours it seems to be appear dry 24 hours it's definitely dry um, what I've been doing is making more of a concentrated oil solution here and then bringing some over and diluting it further in here and working that way and kind of eyeing it. Um, that's just the way I've been doing it as compared to diluting all of it at once. Um, so it actually takes a fair bit of vehicle. I kind of wondered how much you use because nobody really said 
in a video or anywhere like exactly how much to use um, but I know that it takes a fair bit so I'm putting a fair bit in at first and now I'm just going to start just mixing it around I use um, similar techniques as to when we're mixing acrylics to just see how the paint flows up and down the sides of a container or an airbrush cup or something like that just to get an idea of consistency. And so those kinds of techniques are really the same basic te techniques that I relied upon when doing this. And so when I kind of come over here and I just run this up, there's no dripping at all. And so I'm just now just going to add some more vehicle in here. I'm just going to bring some more paint over. I I know a lot of times people think less is more. I find when diluting this stuff, more is more. <laughs> I found that you get a fair amount of color retention no matter how much vehicle I put, but I don't like it if there's not enough and basically just sits there like a pool of paint. You're, I really want a wash to behave like a wash. And so even here, it's not enough can, for my taste. I want more vehicle here. Granted, this is just my experience and how I, I've been doing it in my observations. Interested in everybody else's experiences. Maybe I'm missing the point on something or doing something wrong, but I'm just kind of going by what I've experienced so far. So now I'm really starting to see it flow well. And this would kind of make sense for those of you that are interested in how to use the acrylic washes. You kind of want it to behave similarly where you want it to really only go uh, into the crevices and cracks. Okay. So now I am going to cap my terpenoid here and I might just, just try using the big brush today that I mixed with rather than, um, it's a good quality brush, it still maintains a nice tip. I haven't been really abusing it. Um, so now I'll just move up here. Kind of new to this technique, it feels a little awkward to do this. I'm just going to see if I can do this well on camera. Although it's it's a new technique for me, I, I'm not sure if I just called it awkward. I mean, it's actually pretty simple. When I say awkward, I want people to think that it's just really difficult. Um, it's not. Because the one thing about this is that you'll find that what mistakes are really easy to correct. Um, and a lot of people will actually spray this down and uh, like you would with an acrylic wash and actually put a gloss coat. I've done so many gloss and matte coats on this prior to all these airbrushing that I'm trying to just not do that, so hopefully I don't pay for that mistake. But I'm letting you know that would be the ideal thing, is to, put the, to do that. Put a nice gloss coat. But you can actually remove whatever you do here with a little bit of turpentine. And part of the technique is to remove that because it inevitably goes to some raised areas that you don't want it to. Okay, so I'm going to start in the dark areas just to see how this goes. definitely going in there kind of nice.
one thing I'll mention too is that I'm planning on doing a dry brush as well. So even after I clean this up and I get this lighter again, I'll be accentuating some of that through dry brushing and highlighting at the final stage. So I'll be right back because I actually have to mix more.
obviously I have to still do the rock itself. But overall, I think he's fairly well covered. Definitely did a beating on my, you know, like before actually cleaning this up, if this is to what it would be the final product, it would have done a major beating on all that work I did in highlighting. And so hopefully, you can still see it to a degree in the top of the wings because it's so strong there, but hopefully I am correct in that I will be able to easily clean this up and pull that work back. Um, even before doing my final dry brushing, it shows all that work I did, or else it was a waste of time. Um, which I hope that's not the case. Um, okay, so now what I'm going to do, and not on camera, is I'm going to mix some black and just do the black rocks with an oil, black oil, um, and then let it dry overnight. Okay, see you guys in, in a bit. Hey everybody, so I am back. And this is the result of an overnight dry of the oil wash that I put on yesterday. So I think actually, you know, it, it looks pretty good. I mean, as far as pulling out the detail, I did use um, black in the rock area. So I can just focus in a bit as best as possible. There we go and I used brown in the detail area. Or I should say um, on the model, the dragon itself, not the detail area. I'm not even sure what that means. But, um, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I think it came out pretty good. And so now what I need to do is clean it up because this was not the intended overall look. Um, basically, what I want um, is to now take it off the raised areas, essentially. And particularly on the areas where I put all that yellow. So, I just use some of the turpenoid and put it on, on um, like a um, Q-tip. I try not to use too much at once because I don't want to strip it. But I'm just going to test it here. So you see, as you see, it's sort of coming off. One of the goals is to not have it come off, like take the paint off, and I have used a fair bit of um, uh, let, um, what is the word I'm looking for? A gloss varnish on this, um, and so I'm hoping that that won't happen. It hasn't happened so far. So, it's not coming off, um, it's coming off, but it's not presenting the, the, the sort of yellow effect as fast as I would have liked. Um, but actually it does look like it's showing up again. But I do think I'm going to have to do some dry brushing to augment the color.
So hopefully it's kind of hard, not focusing well for me there, but hopefully you can see how it's definitely lighter still on the top now after I pulled that off. So I'm just going to do that for the rest. And I might end up just fast forwarding just to show you what I'm doing here after I do a little bit more because um, I don't know that you guys want to hang around in regular motion for all of this because it might take me a little while. I've got a lot to pull off. And the technique isn't really that difficult to understand. It's pretty simple. This has been fairly quick, like I don't really think I need to do too much more cleanup. I'm pretty happy with the way it's looking. It really, on this particular case, I mean it's, it stayed pretty much away from the raised surfaces in a lot of ways. I did need to want to lighten up the top here and I think I have. Regardless of that, I think it's still going to need a bit more lightening to get it into the effect that I want. But overall, um, it does show a graduation of color still, like I intended. Like the, the, the top is still lighter here. Um, maybe more of an orange now and a little bit less yellow. Um, and I'm just going to have to come in with a dry brush just to get that effect that I was looking for. So that's the oil wash. And now before I dry brush, I will be protecting this with a... Um, uh, gloss coat again. I, I do always do, when I say gloss, I always do a bit of a satin coat. I do a mixture of gloss and matte. But before I do that, I'm going to, like the rest of the models, I'm going to paint this base black now. Okay. So I will be back um, with, with another video um, just doing the dry brushing and finishing this model up. Take care.